My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. So my name is JC Voorhees. I am in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am the director of Harmony Music Therapy is my business. And I'm sorry, this is very bright, isn't it? <laughs> On my face. Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> we can barely we can barely hear you, so you got to talk a little bit louder. But okay. we're good. We're we're on the right track. So right. listen, I was going through your. I mean, you. I know you got your book in it, but I got questions before we even get there. Sure. You're using big words on your Instagram, especially on your bio, and I got like three questions that I want to clarify. What does it mean to believe in your powers? Okay, so I believe everybody has something unique to contribute no matter how different you feel if you feel like you don't belong or that you don't really have anything valuable to offer everybody does and it for some people it might just be within the walls of their own home and for other people they might have this global impact but everybody has power and everybody has value and it's when we compare ourselves to others that we start to doubt it so when we believe in our power, we have this ability to put aside what we think we should be, and we just become what we are. Okay, because I know my wife has got powers. She says stuff, and I do, but I didn't know what kind of powers you were talking about. I, so, Human power. <laughs> okay, got it. I just, I just want to clarify what type of power. I mean, my little daughter, she just points at things, and she gets what she wants. So I don't know if she's thinking she's like a superwoman, she points things and things happen. So I just didn't know what kind of powers you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to trust your worth? Yes, absolutely. What does it mean to have trust in your worth? Oh, what is that? Sorry, I, okay. So to trust in your worth. So everybody in their childhood, we have these experiences that make us doubt whether we belong. Maybe the neighborhood kids beat you up. Maybe your brother teased you. Maybe your parents treated you badly, whatever it is. As kids, we believe that we're worthwhile. And then as we grow, we start to wonder, well, they didn't treat me right. Maybe I'm wrong. Or this person said that maybe they're right. So we, it's like, I imagine like this glowing ball, like we all have this, this goodness within us. And then these experiences cover it up. And we start to wonder if that's really who we are and if we really are worthwhile. Um, so to trust our worth means that we believe in what we can't see yet enough to peel off those layers and to believe that there's something under there. There's this beautiful person under there that maybe got covered up by bad experiences. And um, so trusting in that is, is just living true to this idea that everybody's valuable and it's just us that holds back from that sometimes because of what we've experienced. So would you call that a self-development? Because this is the way I understood it. Self-development has to do with you possibly learning new skills or new way of doing things. But what's inside you, it's not new, it's not old. It is what it is. So how important is it? Is it that you got to know who you are? Because the way I look at it is this. If somebody's getting bullied, but they know who they are, I kind of think because they know who they are, that kind of blocks it and doesn't. Like, here's an example. You could call me stupid, and I'll be like, hmm, what does that mean? Like, it will not affect me. You could call me low IQ, and it probably will not affect me. You call me black, it won't affect me. You call me white. It won't affect me. You say right now is nighttime. Won't affect because I know who I am and I can see what's going on. So it doesn't affect me what you say. Is because how I interpret it internally. So what is the difference between self development? And you don't have to answer if you don't know. It's cool. It's just a question that I've been having and I'm getting a lot of answers and I think it's going to come to a clarification for myself. What's the difference between knowing who you are and self-develop? I think it's, so I consider it self-awareness versus self-development. I think with self-development, you're trying to become something. With self-awareness, you're noticing who you are already. So self-awareness doesn't mean that we're suddenly perfect or that we know how to do everything, but you think, okay, so this person just said that, or 
maybe maybe my father-in-law or something just made a comment that rubbed me wrong and I'm upset. It's thinking I'm feeling upset because that's a vulnerable spot for me. If someone criticizes my mothering or for women, it tends to be mothering and self and body image for men. It tends to be um, power and uh, like your ability to provide for your family and, and so forth. So if people take jabs at those areas, self-awareness means I'm feeling that because that's a vulnerable spot for me. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me. It's just that's vulnerable to me. And the more aware I am of that, the more able I am to handle those emotions. Um, I'm a big fan of Renee Brown and she calls it shame resilience, knowing that we're going to experience shame and these feelings, but we also know how to, to deal with them because we know ourselves well enough to see our patterns and, also to be patient in the process and know that we don't have to always get it right. Well, something is wrong with you because you give a shit what other people think. So, but we won't go there. <laughs> to me, it's like, you shouldn't care what they, I mean, uh, to me, it's like, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm Persian and I'm tough skinned. I don't know, maybe I had a, I, I, I can't say I had a hard childhood. I just had a childhood that's different than other people, you know? But to me, it's like, you gotta be tough skinned because if somebody can leverage you or edify you or says good things, if it robs you, that's a problem. And if they say something negative and it robs you, is also, so either way, it, could, it doesn't have to be like someone says you're a good mom. Like you shouldn't be having all these egos and feeling like muscle and like, yeah, I am a good mom. Thank you for recognizing. Like, you know, that's like the ego. Side. You were born good. You're supposed to do good. Like to me, it's like, why are you trying to get credit for doing the right thing? I don't know. Yeah. You might have a different opinion on that. No, I agree. Our, I think a lot of the times we fall into this trap of thinking our value is dependent on what other people reflect back to us for good or for bad, and it's not. Our value is constant, no matter what we do or what other people say. Yeah, I think you guys are getting it good in Utah. It may not be as much as population as L.A., but these days, here's what happens in L.A. I mean, you gotta, I mean, I'm pretty sure you travel, but if you do travel, next time bring your awareness to that, that. When people live in certain areas, drive certain cars or wear certain, you know, designers or this or that, I think that's when that's when I saw your bio and I was like, this, we could write a whole entire book about this. So maybe we should collaborate on your next book and we should, like, believe in yourself or your powers. A lot of people believe in the material things that they have that gives them the, the power. So that's right there. Trust your worth. Well, the more money you spend on acquiring things that are probably going to deteriorate within 5, 10, 15, 20 years, then you think you're really worth it, right? And then live with the purpose. I, I mean, you, then your purpose is all convoluted, which comes to my next question. How do I find out if I'm living my purpose? Honestly, for, so I can only speak from my experience. My experience is when I feel energy towards something, then I feel like I'm living my purpose. Um, currently, I'm writing a book and I'm managing two businesses and all of it just like electrifies me. Like I can't wait to get up and work on it because I'm just like, I need to do this. I need to create this course and I need to write this next chapter. Um, and I know I know that most people don't relate to that. because <laughs> a lot of I do. Like, I, we're doing a course right now. We gotta do. We gotta do the email marketing for it. We gotta do the course. We gotta do the video. We gotta do the graphic. I mean, we got so much work that I was kind of thinking like, if there is any type of medication we could think where we only get like four hours of sleep and then literally work the rest because I need the twenty hours in a day. Like I'm coming out short on hours. I wish there was like another extra day, but that's just me trying to do everything by myself. And, but that's a. I have my own personal issues, but that's different. <laughs> but like you wake up and you're like oh my god i got so much to do like you're doing and stuff and then here's the crazy part there might be people that are watching you right now they might actually get burned out watching you yes <laughs> it's true people are like how are you why are you doing that like i don't know but for me it is it's so internal like i just i just want to like for me i have to choose to take a break because when I have five minutes to myself, I want to do the next thing. I want to work towards the next thing. And so for me, I, that's, that's evidence to me that I'm living my purpose because I feel so excited about it and so much energy 
um, that I, I really do have to like tell myself to take a break because if not, I'll work myself to the ground and then I like have a whole day where I just need to like do nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, 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 there's a lot of people that could relate to that. Trust me. You'd be surprised how many people. Now, they may not come and tell you or they may not find you, but they're out there and they're going through the same challenges. Here's my last question for you. Tell us a little bit about your book. What is it about? Is it out? When is it going to be out? Why should we go? Why should we go read your book? So I so I'm currently in my last phase of beta read and last phase of revision. Um, it's been requested by uh, two top agents and a publisher. So we'll see what the journey looks like. Um, but I wrote it. It's about discovering your value when you think you don't belong. It's called I pick my nose and this con this metaphor that we all feel like our differences, the things that we do wrong, separate us from each other. When the truth is, when we tell our story, then we feel connected. Everybody picks their nose. I did not know that until I wrote this book and I started talking to people. <laughs> so You'd be surprised I'm how many people pick their nose while they're driving. You'd be surprised. Right. <laughs> so it's just and this is the crazy part. You think nobody's watching, but a lot of people do see that. I mean, I don't think it's bad. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we somebody at some time came and said this was a bad thing, but I'm like, it's a human. I mean, you see animals licking, licking themselves, cleaning their 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 babies, and all. I mean, that that was like so cute. Is all, but I'm like, you know, at least you know. Anyway, that's a different topic. But go ahead. You were talking about the book. <laughs> so, so in the book, I, I walked through um, my journey. It's it's. A little bit of a memoir, mostly self-help, um, but the experiences that I had, like I said, in childhood, I didn't have a rough childhood. I had a pretty good life, actually. I'm, I've, had a, I've had a great life, but I had things that still caused me to put up walls, think that something was wrong with me, um, feeling like I didn't really belong, even though everyone was nice, but I just felt like I'm just different. I don't, I don't really belong because I do this or because they don't include me or whatever that looks like. And so it was my journey of going through that and ultimately discovering that no matter um, what I do, I have this value. Like, I don't need other people to say it. But when I, when I realize that value, then I start to reach out naturally. Then I start to follow my passions. When I believe that I matter, then I want to share that regardless of what other people say or what they do. Um, and it's, it's just my journey of feeling that, experiencing that, and wanting to um, just keep that close to home. Um, and at the very end, I, I realized there's, I mean, honestly, it was, it was me writing about my journey. And then after I finished the book, I was like, awesome. Like, I've got this all figured out. And then I have another period of time where I'm like, oh, dang it. That really hurt when they said that. And I'm like, no, I don't want this to hurt. So it's also this, um, you know, when doubt returns, how do we manage that? Because we are going to doubt ourselves. We're going to wonder if we're really doing what we need to. Um, and so how to, how to keep that. Mindset. But doubting yourself shouldn't be a bad thing. Is it, I think is a positive thing. I think it's a defense mechanism. If you didn't doubt that you could do any, I mean, we'll do a lot of crazy things that could possibly hurt us. So to me, it's like doubt, doubt is not a bad thing. But if you have all, your, all, all the facts, all the information to make a, a very sound decision, then there shouldn't be any doubt. Then that doubt to me, that's a negative energy that's coming towards you where you need to ignore it. But if you have all the if you have all the details and you know what you're doing, there should be no doubt. Like now, I'm not gonna talk about the outcome. The outcome might be positive, might be negative, but that's different results. Like some people attach their outcome and their doubt to how much money am I gonna make. To me it's like that shouldn't be the case. It's the journey that you go through. Maybe you don't make any money the first book. Maybe you don't make money the second book. I don't know. Maybe we do the third book together and then we still don't make any money. And then there's a fourth one. And then the fifth one is the best selling. Everybody gets a copy on the planet. And then you're, you know, so to me, it's like there shouldn't be any doubt. It's just feedback. And we got to learn from the mistakes. Obviously, you're going to make a lot of mistakes on the first book. Second book, you may not, you're not going to make those mistakes. But how would you know if you don't go through it? Yeah, I'm, I'm operating on a lot of just gut instincts here and knowing that, like, it's okay. Like, I know that you love Napoleon Hill from your feet. Like, I am obsessed. If I could meet two people from history, it would be Napoleon Hill and Fred Rogers. Like, I'm obsessed with both of them. Good. Um, yeah, Napoleon Hill's a cool guy. Let me tell you a story. I actually had the opportunity 
Uh, I have not put it online yet. I did a Zoom meeting. I did a two-hour conversation, phone conversation. Then I did about another 45 minutes, an hour Zoom with the last mer person on this planet that is still alive that actually got training by Napoleon Hill himself. His name is Ben Gay the Third. His name is Ben Gay the Third. He's got a couple of books in network marketing. I mean, he's the big King Kong back in the days like this guy. But literally, he told me stories of, of how he experienced Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill actually lived in his house for a period of time. And then he was in his office for a period of time. And he was 25 at a time when Napoleon Hill was assigned to coach him and train him. I mean, just the stories of how Napoleon Hill changed this guy's life with like, you know, the stories with like one word that Napoleon Hill would say. And this guy will literally like take days on just pondering of what this means, like how important is vocabulary that you use to, I mean, some crazy stuff. But Napoleon Hill, I mean, thinking good should be your Bible for self-development. But again, I think a lot of authors, a lot of uh, coaches, a lot of mentors out there have taken parts and beats and, and pieces out of it and elaborate more because it was written 100 years ago. So, I, I mean, you know, if you read the first version, 1937 or previous one, some of the stuff you read, you read in size might actually come out being racist or frankly wrong. Yeah. Totally fine. But when you look at it in totality, I think people need it to be much easier to be able to do. I mean, this should be taught in every high school. If they would have taught this in high school, like we wouldn't have all the stuff that we're having right now when it comes to economy, self-development, entrepreneurship. We'll have more business owners versus employees. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so how do people find, so the book is not out, but if it, but, so how do they find you on Instagram? Let them know that because I know a few people ask. So at least when the, the, the book is done, they could go pre-sell it, pre-order or do whatever they need to do. Absolutely. So I'm at, at JC Voorhees author. Um, so in my, my intent with Instagram coming up here, I'm, I'm doing this whole makeover right now. So what you see now is old. <laughs> so it's going to be new coming out here in a few weeks. But my intent is to connect with people on a level where we can share our passions together. I personally, I want to find other people who are also like waking up in the morning, ready to go and so excited about this stuff that they're doing in their lives and, and create a community with that and support each other um, because we will get to points where we're like overwhelmed or am I really doing everything I should be or why did I start so many things? Um, so that's my goal. I want to have a place where people feel like they belong, where their differences actually connect us and where we can really live our purpose. All you have to do is just log into my Instagram for like two days you're going to say, I don't want to meet people that are crazy like me anymore. Like I, in two days, you'll meet so many. You're like, listen, no more. I'm done. I got enough network connections. Like I get, it's, it's, it's crazy how many people are out there, but it's not nearly enough to make a big impact over a short span of period of time. We will impact the world over a long span of time. But if you want to collapse that time frame. We need more entrepreneurs. We need more creative people. We need more people that are excited about what they're doing and how they're going to live their lives. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Let us know when the book is out or whenever you got a chapter of it or pages of it that you want us to share. We'll definitely love to share on that on our page. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. You got to talk to you soon. Stay safe. All right. You too. Bye-bye.